But first, the story of a Palo Alto High School graduate being told for the first time on ABC 7 News here may just become the latest flashpoint in the increasingly bitter battle over elite college admissions. You're watching Getting Answers on ABC 7. I'm Kristen Z. Have you heard the name Stanley Jong? The 18-year-old graduated from Gunn High School in Palo Alto earlier this year. Like many seniors, he was disappointed in his college admissions decisions. But unlike most, his story was brought up in a Capitol Hill hearing. He was hired directly from high school by Google, but rejected by 16 America's top schools like MIT, CMU. Stanley Jong, rejected by a stunningly long list of colleges, is now working full-time with just a high school diploma for one of the top tech companies in the world, Google. Joining us live now to talk about his eye-opening experience, Stanley Jong and his father, Nan Jong. Stanley and Nan, thank you both so much for coming in today. Thanks for having us on. All right, this is pretty incredible, folks. You're 18, you're employed full-time by Google. What exactly do you do for them? Um, I am a software development engineer, uh, specifically with the Google Cloud team. Okay, that sounds really big and important and difficult. Uh, do you know exactly what you'll be doing yet? I, I know you just got started, right? Oh uh, yeah, today is actually my second day. Uh -huh. um, so right now, you know, I'm still going through onboarding, ramping up, you know, learning some Google's internal tools, things like that. Okay, so it's safe to say that they don't just hire anyone. You have to have strong coding skills, so congratulations. And Dad, you must be really proud. Uh, but this offer from Google came after a really, I guess, disappointing round of college decisions, right? Tell us about that. Yeah, definitely. I applied to probably around 18 schools, and I was rejected from maybe around 15 of those. In fact, we have a map showing all the places that rejected you, not to make you feel worse looking at this list, uh, but I can see the usual ones people applied to, Berkeley, Stanford, um, MIT, Georgia Tech, uh, Cornell, all great uh, places in terms of the academics and CS, sorry, CMU is actually Carnegie Mellon, which is in Pittsburgh, sorry, we'll put that in the wrong spot. Uh, we just wanted to bring them to California. But, but really, also, look at some of these Cal Poly and Santa Barbara and San Diego and Washington. Okay, so I, I'm not trying to make you feel bad here. I'm just wondering how you felt as each of these letters came in saying, no, thank you, Stanley. Oh, yeah, well, some of them were certainly expected, you know, Stanford, MIT. You know, it's, it is what it is, right? Yeah. But, yeah, for some of them, like Cal Poly, uh, some of the state schools, I really thought, you know, I had a good chance. And it turns out, uh, however good of a chance I had, I didn't get in. Uh, okay, well, let's just share your statistics because I know that factors into college admissions, right? Uh, your GPA and SAT score? Uh, GPA was 4.42 weighted. Uh, SAT score was 1590. Okay, and in fact, I think we have that on a graphic just so folks can see that. Um, but in addition to statistics, because we know that's not everything, right, when you're talking about applying to the elite schools, uh, what are some of these coding competitions that you did well in? Yeah, so Google Code, uh, Google Code Jam is Google's uh, annual coding contest. Uh, it's for all ages, uh, developers all across the world, and the semifinals uh, require you to pass through uh, two other separate rounds of increasing difficulty in order to uh, reach the semifinals. Okay, and then MIT's battle code, I I've heard of that. I know you're creating stuff in a short amount of time and uh, your team came in second, so that's all great. But in addition to that, you created an app, right? Yep. Something, I don't know if it's similar to DocuSign, but it's a signing app. In fact, you're wearing the t-shirt. What is yep. that? What did you code? What is this? Yes, RabbitSign is an unlimited free e-signing platform. And yeah, you're right, it's very similar to DocuSign. Uh, the main difference being that it's free. And I really uh, started RabbitSign because of the pandemic, where, you know, with social distancing happening, e-signing was really becoming essential in order to conduct business, right? Because you can't sign pen and paper contracts anymore. Okay, that does make sense. But let me ask you, you created all this before you were, how old, how old were you when you designed this app? Um, I first came up with the idea for RabbitSign probably around the end of middle school. Um, and the, the uh, RabbitSign itself, fully became a company with incorporation and everything in my sophomore year. Okay. So, Nan, how did your son pick up all these coding skills? Like, do all these things that grown-ups do after they get their master's or PhD? Um, it's surprising to me as well. So, he started 
picking up coding on his own around age 10. And uh, of course, I was in the, I'm in the IT industry, so I thought maybe I can teach him a thing or two. But the fact is that um, he learned all this on, on his own. Um, I can share with you that after noticing his interest, I gave one of the, the classic uh, algorithm books that I had from college uh -huh. to him. And has been sitting in his room collecting dust for two years. <laughs> and he never opened it. When I asked him, he, he gave me a sarcastic teenager look yeah. and said, hey, Dad, there's a thing called the, the internet. Um, so they, they just learn things very differently. I'm a parent. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> That's right. If you said it, they're not going to pay attention to it. But if their friend said it or they found it on the internet, that's a different story. Um, but how was your perspective as you saw, you know, I don't know if you thought he had a decent chance of getting into more of those schools that we showed on that map that rejected him, but how did it make you feel? Certainly disappointing. Um, and uh, what, what, what I worry is that uh, whether he's going to be uh, emotionally stressed. Luckily, he still gets some good results, and therefore, he's OK with it. Um, and on top of that, I think the Google offer really um, is a lucky turn of event. But it's a, a luxury that most kids like his situation won't be able to have. So you did get into a couple of schools, right? I understand you got into Texas and, and, Texas Maryland, and Maryland, right? Yes. Good schools, good schools. Um, are you not attending then since you got this Google job? Um, yeah, I actually went to uh, University of Texas's orientation. Um, but once the Google offer came through, I thought, you know, this is a good opportunity. I'm going to take it. And we'll see in a year from now, do I still want to attend uh, University of Texas, or should I stick with Google? Right, because a lot of people go to college and then hope to get a job like the kind that you already have. So we'll see. Um, but look, you have not really done media until now, but your story has gone viral, I understand, in chat groups and blogs and forums that uh, many parents and college, you know, kids who are applying to college are visiting. Um, I don't think this makes them less worried hearing what happened to you, right? I mean, in a way, I wonder what you hope telling your story will do for other kids. Yeah, certainly. Um, well, I think one of the main things that we're pushing for is transparency. Um, when our story, when my story has been shared, we've heard a lot of speculation about, you know, why I didn't get in, um, what the reasons could have been. Right, I, I did yes. see a couple like, oh, did he have terrible teacher's recommendations? Uh, are his essays terrible? Just uh, full disclosure, you shared your personal statement with me. Just to look at, I'm no expert, but uh, no red flags. Um, nothing that would say, oh my goodness, this person should not be on this campus. Um, you're right, there was speculation. So why are you telling your story? Well, because we really want to push for transparency because there shouldn't really need to be a need for speculation. We should be able to, you know, if we get rejected, be able to look at, you know, these are the reasons why, and we shouldn't have to just kind of blindly guess in the dark um, about a black box process. I see. So are you saying that you're hoping for some sort of law or some requirement that where candidates can get some feedback? Is that what you're saying? Because, uh, or is it something else? Is there something else that you think may be inherently wrong with the system? Do you have any thoughts, Nan? Yeah, I think uh, transparency is something I think we can have more of. And uh, frankly, in a democratic society, we have to have checks and balances for every power. And I think that in this case, bringing transparency is a form of checks and balances for this kind of like a black box process. And uh, I've been, um, once Stanley's story went uh, sort of viral uh, less than uh, just a week ago, well, I received a lot of emails from parents sharing their stories. Uh, students with 4.0 GPA got rejected by all the UC schools. So Stanley's case is definitely not alone and seems to be striking a chord that a lot of people feel like this is something that we need to look into. It's definitely a conversation people are interested in right now, how to make the process fair for everyone, transparent, less nerve-wracking, less stressful. Um, so I'm sure we'll continue this conversation. But real quickly, we got to go. But 10 seconds, what advice would you give to other kids who may be applying this year Stanley? Um, start essays as early as you can and really uh, apply broadly. Um, to apply to a wide selection of colleges, colleges you think you definitely will get into, apply to those anyway. And apply to some that you're sure you'll get into as well. All right, Gunn High School graduate and Google software engineer Stanley Jong uh, and his dad, Nan Jong. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for Good having luck us. To you.